Hello guys, welcome to the man cave up there. Today, if you've just watched my last video, I did a review on this um, Bavarian, a Chinese Bavarian, very impressed, shan't win to that now, and just watch the last video, which will be posted just before this one. You're now gonna see me make this into a bioactive setup. I have filter media. This filter media is what you get from um, pond centers, or fish supplies and this is just the media that goes in filter boxes for outdoor ponds it also acts as brilliant substrate or drainage layers should I say for bioactive vivariums so I've cut these to the right size of the tank there's a coarse a medium and a fine to be honest with you in my previous setups I've always used all coarse of course it's not really going to do too much filtering I've cut these to the size of the tank that I want I only want them this size simply because this end is going to be a pond for the toad. So the toad is going to have a pond this end and this is going to be his land mass. It will make sense, believe me. So the first job is put these layers of filter medium in. I'm putting coarse in the bottom, then medium, then fine. So we'll put these in the tank. And then on top of that we put our little piece of this is the black stuff that you put over shingle to stop weeds coming through because you're going to put dirt on top of this and you don't want the dirt actually getting into that medium because it will kind of ruin that sort of effect a little so we just want this piece of stuff in here I always tuck it down the edges a bit so you can't sort of see the foam too much. You don't have to do that, it's just my personal preference. You ain't got to be too neat with this, nobody really sees it. It's all covered up with greenery and your dirt. So yeah, just tuck all the ends in. This, all this is really for is to stop the dirt going in the filter medium. Because you don't want it. Right. There you go, that's basically put that in there. Right, now we're going to make up a filter box. Move the camera downwards, there you go. We're going to make a filter box because I'm going to put a... If I can find it. Ah, there it is. I'll have to put the adapter in there we're going to put a filter box in, a waterfall, sorry. Uh, there we go. So we don't need that on there quite yet. So what we need to do is, yeah, this stuff is plastic egg crate. Ever so cheap on eBay, all the stuff I got off eBay, everything. And within the week, the whole lot was here. So yeah, that's a plastic egg crate. So we need a piece of that. And I've already cut some down to the height I want it. And you're wondering what the zip ties are for? You will see. So we just gotta put these together. And we gotta make a box with these. Once again, it isn't seen, it's all covered. So don't think you have to be terrifically neat because you don't. Zip tie each end. Sorry, this is a bit long and drawn out, but I don't tend to edit or forward through my videos because when I watch a video, I often like to see people do the whole thing. So I only put a zip tie every couple of every couple of holes. It's not really vital. It just holds it together, really, but it's going to be sort of... It will all be explained in a little while, actually. And you'll see exactly what I'm doing here. So that's one side in. And we need to put the other side in. Okay. 
this stuff's very easy to cut with side cutters. And in case you're wondering what's going in this tank, there is a South American cane toad going in there. He's currently in a two foot tank behind me on the floor. He was up on there, but we've just moved him because he needs a bigger home. So he's going in this one. Hence why we bought the bigger tank, because he needed more room. The South American cane toad at the minute, he's, mm, I think he's about five inches long, but he's only an infant. And when they get bigger, fully grown, they can get up to 12 inches and about two and a half, three kilos in weight. So he's going to be a monster toad in about probably 12 months from now, he will be Mahusin. I mean, compared to my white tree frogs, he's huge now. All right, now we've got that bit built, we need an end in there. So I've got to cut this to length now. So we want that cut along there. You can easily cut this stuff with a pair of side cutters. There you go, that easy. Right, put an end in. So there's no measuring, this is all very, I wouldn't say crude, well it is crude, yeah it's crude, it's man cave, it's crude. So yeah, sorry this bit is a bit long and drawn out, but like I say I don't like to edit my videos too much, I'd rather people see the whole thing. Need to just put the other end in, and then this bit is done to a degree. Tell you what, save you watching this boring bit, I will just pause the video now and I will come back when this is all trimmed up. All right, see you in a minute. All right, we're back again, guys. So, what we've done is we've made our little cage. Cable tied it together. Oh, I've just noticed I've missed one tie. So our, our little filter housing's all cable tied together. Cut them off. There you go. I've got to put one in the middle here as well. It's got to be one side. Right, there we are, definitely done. So, here's our little cage, what we've made. Here is our terrapin waterfall. I've made a hole in the top, just right for that to go in. And that will sit there. And these stucky pads will go up the side of the tank. Not a problem, we can bend these cable ties in so that's just sit more flush. There we go. So, that cable tie has come undone. Right, so there's our filter in there, and water will obviously come out of there. This is all now going to go in there, but in order to put this in, we need to cut a hole out. We need to cut a hole out of this medium, big enough for this, wherever you want it. Or I could, which I may well do, put it up this end of the tank. In fact, Yep, I've just decided it is going to live there. So we now need to cover that to disguise it and put some filter medium in that as well. So yep, I've just decided that's what's going to happen. It's going to go up that end. It fitted just too well, considering nothing was measured. It all just fitted too well. It's, um, it's a bit tempting fate, really. So we'll just put him in. I know we need to just, this is very simple get some off cuts of filter medium which we've got plenty of and just fill this full of filter medium so nothing that really has to be measured it doesn't really matter it's not crucial it's only we're not building a spaceship here it don't really sort of matter too much 
want some more fine stuff in the top. We go all this length. medium here as well from when I've done previous. Nothing goes to waste with this medium, you can use the smallest piece, it doesn't really matter. You can actually just use anything you like, as long as it goes in. That's a bit of tuck in there. Uh, we've got some more black pieces here as well. Length, isn't it? Yeah, I cut two or three bits that long. Yeah, that can all sit in there. And what this will do is this layer I've put in the tank will purely be for the bioactive, it isn't going to be vital at all to what we're actually. All that is is it will have water in there which will keep the humidity right, it will keep the levels in the tank right and also even though that membrane's on there there will be bacteria, good bacteria build up. There you go. And we can put a strip or two in here I should say. And that will fill that up. Perfect. Look at that made to measure that piece straight in. So there is our filter box. Now to disguise that because it isn't very pretty, we're actually going to cover that in the black stuff. Now whether you guys want to see me do that, I don't know. I don't know whether to pause the video or whether you're going to just come back when I've done it. Tell you what, I'll just cover this, but you don't want to see that, and then I'll come back when I've done. I'll see you in a bit. Right, back again. Typical man cave style, I've changed my mind. I've decided to put the filter box I've made in here. So I've cut a piece out of this bottom substrate, this layer, and put the filter box there. So now, the water that gets sucked out of here, it will get, the whole lot of the water will get filtered and circulated. I hope you can see through that reflection of the glass. So right, now we're ready to put the substrate in. Um, this is the fun bit, this is where we put the soil in and actually start making it look more like a toad's home. So let's get the substrate in. Right, we've got a bowl. Here I've got some leaf litter which I actually got out of my garden. So this is perfectly organic. Um, I've actually got an acre of land which has been in the family 40 years. It's never been farmed, it's never been fertilised and it's never had any sort of animals on it. So this is all just decent sort of contaminant free stuff. Right, and a stick I found. So we're going to put that in there, that's just the normal dirt, which will be absolutely fine. There might be too much there, I might have to put some of that, and there might be a bit too much. So I'm going to put some of that back in the bin bag. I can always add more, but you can't take it out once you've got your mixture made. Right. Hey, already I see I see live stuff in there, so that's good. So we need a little bit of soil, because that, that's going to take quite a bit of covering. I've also got, if I just come over here and get it, I've also got three bagfuls of of shop bought stuff. I'll take it we cut the top off this. 
put and find my scissors. Bearing in mind this is a toad, you know, very hardy. They come from a very similar climate to the UK. So, yeah. But this is proper reptile stuff. This is actually for spiders, but it works absolutely fine with toads as well. So say these are pretty hardy animals. They're not like they're not like delicate dark dark frogs and stuff like that that does need certain stuff. They'll pretty much live on and eat anything. Right, so now we've got that. Without getting it over the wife's carpet and her going mad, we'll give it a little mix. And we really want to put a bit of sphagma moss in here as well. Oops, I just spilled a bit. Look like I'll be doing the hoovering later. Alright, that's got a little bit of that mixed in there. Here's some sphagma moss. This stuff you can just get from garden centres, really. I mean, you can get this stuff anywhere. I'll just mix a bit in with the soil. I will put a layer in before I actually tip all this in. But it just helps with drainage a bit. I don't think there's anywhere enough in here. But we'll put a bit more in. So it's only really to give this leaf litter the good does it need. Because we're going to inject into here um, they call it the cleanup crew, it's uh, isopods and springtails, which are basically woodlouse and little tiny midget things. Will this go through there? It will. So now we can just tip this directly on there. There you go, the whole lot. I don't know whether you guys can see that. Let me move the camera. there so we've put that directly on there and just spread it out so the toad he does like plenty of ground to burrow in so I'm going to heap it up a bit more at one end I will probably add some more in here later I'm just showing you basically how you do it you aren't going to see this totally finished quite yet because I haven't planted it out or nothing but just put some sphagnum moss in there. <clears throat> now bear in mind he don't want all sphagnum moss, he does just like some dirt as well. These are, they don't just want the moss, but we're giving him the option. I mean he's going to drag half of that in the water anyhow. But you will see when that's done, it will look quite nice. So we're just going to put that there. We have a big cave we're going to put here with a little hole under it so we can actually get in it because he's quite big. And yeah that's basically all we've got to do. There's another bag of this stuff I'm going to make an island up there for him. Of course, the idea of bio tanks is they are self-sufficient. You don't really have to clean them out. They don't particularly have water bowls you need to clean out either. Of course, they tend to sort of do it all there. And the, the idea of the cleanup crew is they eat everything. So everything's bad. Oh, perfect. He will love that. There, look. We can cover his cave a bit with that. There. Now, Mr. Toad, I think, is going to be quite impressed with this. Open another bag. You're going to say, why didn't you buy two big bags? Well, the pet store didn't have two big bags. They only had one big bag and three little ones, so I bought everything they had. There we go. So he's got high ground now. Yeah. Bearing in mind, when he gets in there overnight, it will be ruined. Believe me, he will just annihilate it and get it how he wants it. So you can make it look pretty now. 
he will just destroy it, believe me. Right, next step, we will add some water, add some shingle in the bottom, and then we can turn it on. Right, while I get some water, I will be back in a minute. Right guys, we're back. As you can see, I've done a bit more work. I've put a plant in, and I've put a little stream in which I made. I haven't got a video to show you how I made the stream, but I made it for another tank, and I've just borrowed it. The stuff I used was this stuff. You can get it from, well, I got it from B&Q. It's basically the camber strap, what you use to fix the bottom of chairs. I got a piece of this, pipe insulation I threaded a piece of stiff wire through the middle steel bar I bent the steel bar with the shape I wanted and I formed this to the shape I wanted the stream and then excuse my amateurish video skills I actually held that along there with various bits of tape bent this to shape it came out all curvy once I had it all to shape I actually brushed it in um, resin, two, you know, two part epoxy resin, stone stuff you use for fiberglass, I just didn't add the fiberglass, I just used the resin, and left it till it dried, took the foam insert out where it just broke away, and we were left with that, but I've got it plugged in, whoops, so we're now going to actually try this to see if our little waterfall works, there's this cave, I'll put a plant in there, three plants. I do need a bit more shingle in there. In case you're wondering, there's uh, 18 pints of water gone in there. So let's turn it on. Well, that's a good sign. Are we going to get... There you go. Are we going to get water? Here it comes. There you go. Perfect. He's got a waterfall. And there our little toad has now got a waterfall. So I think now it's time for us to introduce him in there. And there is his finished tank. Work in progress, it will improve. So let's get the lid off his old tank. Oh yes, he's awake. There he is. And he's not too happy because his house has been interrupted. But there is our toad. He's an absolutely massive cane toad. I'm going to pick him up with two hands, so let me stand the camera back up. I don't want to risk dropping the little fella. Right, let's get him out. Here he is. And he's not too happy about coming out because it's his sleep time. So we'll put him in. Here he is. Right. Right, there is our cane toad in his new house. Now let's see, make of that what he will. He's got his little stream, he's got water to get in, he can sit and drink in that. Everything will be filtered out of the water. Oops, there he goes. He's had a little hop, so we'll see what he makes of it. In the old tank, he used to live behind this plant, so I've actually took the plant and the log out what he used to live behind, just in case he decides he wants to go behind that one as well. If not, he's got this lovely cave I've made in here for him. But knowing him, he won't go in it. He didn't go in his cave last time. But yeah, so that's it. Like and subscribe. You will see more videos of Euclid, I'm sure. And let's hope he likes his new home so yeah once this is established with a bit more greenery in it it will look lovely but for you guys that are thinking how do you set up a bioactive tank this is it the most important thing is drainage layer good nutritious healthy soil spagma moss and do not forget to add your cleanup crew your isopods and springtails there's woodlouse there's beetles there's springtails there's two or three thousand spring tiles and about 200 woodlouse gone into that. And they, sounds disgusting I know, but they will clean up. They do what they say. They eat his poop. You don't have to clean that up. They will eat his poop. They will keep the water clean. The bacteria will build up just like in a fish tank. The water, you know, the water, 
uh, the bacteria in the water will build up and the water will become natural just like in a pond you don't change water in a pond and all kinds live in that so this is basically a miniature um, natural habitat we've just made it into a three foot by two foot thing right hope you enjoyed the video and remember to watch the review on the vivarium itself if you did want to see about that and i shall speak to you another time bye bye for now